really exciting that we are uh, now in a position to uh, confirm the BME transaction with such a high percentage of uh, acceptance from uh, from the BME shareholders, which I think is a is a great testament that the combination of BME and Six will be very strong. Um, as you know, Six has three different business lines: payments. Um, data business and the stock exchange. Um, payments is very local in Switzerland, but the data business is a very international business where we, in the areas where we, um, we are very strong, we're competing with, uh, with Reuters, um, Bloomberg and Refinitiv. Um, and on the stock exchange, we now made a big move to, uh, to become even bigger and get more scale um, in Europe, in the EU and in Switzerland together with the combination of BME and SIX. And we will, we will use that platform around payments, around data, and the stock exchange to further build out our business. Uh, and to your point, we will invest also heavily, and we are investing heavily in new technology and innovation. So next to building out the existing business, creating more scale, delivering more products and services to the customers of both BME and SIX, we will also continue to invest in, uh, in new technologies and business uh, and services. So does that mean that you would be looking to add more verticals or continue to strengthen, strengthen your payments or, or exchanges businesses? I think um, with the combination of SIX and BME now, we have two strong verticals in two strong, strong home markets combined, which gives us a very good position both in Switzerland and in the EU, where Spain will, it will be the beach, uh, beachfront for or the, the beachhead for EU expansion. So from that perspective, I think we're sitting, sitting quite well. We will, um, of course, always look at opportunities for the exchange business uh, also going forward. But one of the key priorities will also be the data business, which we see as a, as a huge opportunity to grow. And, and next to that, the payments business, what we see is that more and more customers are looking for integration and more combination and cross-pollination of products and services across data, across payments, across, um, across the exchange business. So we will definitely look at that and, um, and continue to invest in all three businesses. Right, a huge theme for this industry. And I'm curious, you, know, you talk about how you've strengthened your, um, your data business and clearly your infrastructure off offering very competitive with your peers. How do you expect the LSE Refinitiv deal to affect the competitive landscape when it comes to these more integrated businesses? Um, the, I think um, I, I understand the strategy of LSE, to be honest. I think um, a pure exchange business needs to be complemented with data. We even have the, the payments uh, business um, also in our portfolio. So um, I see that as a, as a good move for them. Uh, but we already have that portfolio. We will be investing in trying to get more data, alternative data and other data sources um, into our portfolio, deliver that data in a smarter, more effective and flexible way to our customers using cloud APIs and these kind of things. And then on top of that, we will uh, further build out our um, analytics and, uh, and other capabilities to provide from the data that we have and the data sets that we have directly inside for our customers, so really moving up to the value chain. And that data business is something which, uh, which I think is, uh, is a huge opportunity combined with the exchange and the payments business to drive our business forward. And we're very excited about investing and, and, and uh, further building that out also. If I could shift gears a little bit and uh, talk about the impact that COVID-19 has had on the industry, uh, clearly from a market volatility perspective, this could offer a boost for the exchanges. We heard from Credit Suisse CEO uh, earlier this week talking about the uptick in capital markets activity, which should be a, a tailwind for a business like yours. But do you, if you can weigh in on that, that'd be great. But perhaps longer term, do you see COVID-19 leading to any structural changes within your industry? Um, I think COVID-19 will create some structural changes to the way people live their lives, <laughs> to, to say it very broadly, uh, and might also make some changes to the financial industry, although I think that, will be, that impact will be, uh, will be less big. Um, of course, we've seen tremendous volume in the last couple of months, and we will continue, I think, to see good volumes on the markets. Um, there's volatility, there's uh, interest. We also saw the first IPO of the season on the six exchange today. Uh, so also that season is now uh, is now starting, and there will be more IPOs uh, very likely following this year. So from that perspective, I see um, a positive landscape in the medium term. In the long term, of course, if companies are struggling to to be profitable, if companies are struggling to uh, to deliver on their targets, that might impact share prices and might impact. Um, um, 
let's say, longer term sustainable future of some of those companies. And that will then also impact in the end the financial markets, of course. So uh, for short term, medium term, I'm, I'm quite positive. I do hope that many companies are able to survive this difficult period and get their business either in an adjusted way or, or in, the, in, the, in the way it was before, back up and running. Um, and then it could be a blip. But if, if there are sustainable dents in certain parts of the economy, then uh, there will be a longer term impact.